Right, hi everybody and welcome back to Lundy's Wild Camp Stroke Bushcraft. As you can see, I'm back out in the woods again and it's also getting late now. It's now five past six at night, so I've just managed to get out to the woods today. Right, so as you can see, I've got me DD um, camo top. I've just got me ridge line and things. This is me bag for me, um, me magic carpet, me pegs, me guide ropes, and me ridge line. Okay, so I'm just gonna go onto the same trees as the last time. And then if you just have a quick look, this is the net that I've got is from um, AliExpress over in China. It's dead tiny, compact, dead, dead light. But it gives you a nice bit of shelter away from the midges so you can sleep under a tarp and still be able to see out without getting eaten alive. All right, so we'll have a look at that way. We'll pull it up in any way. But I just need to get you set up. Right, so gonna get set up again um, I haven't got a clue how high this thing goes I think it's roughly about that'll do in any way I want to be so I can stand underneath it in any way right so this this uh, ridge line set up, you've seen quite a lot on the channel. Okay, it's a Dyneema cord, fin cord, and it's got like a wasp connector on the end here. Okay, and a small little hook there. It's light, a lightweight um, set up, which is nice, but the downside is because it's so thin, nine times out of ten, it gets, oh, that screen's a bit, Two seconds. Right, like I was saying before, you have seen this setup before. This is a Dyneema cord. It's dead thin, it's dead strong, lightweight, okay. And I have what you call a wasp connector on the side, on the end here, which connects it all together. All right, it has a small little, like, hook here on the end, okay and a little harm coming out, that's its head. All right, and you just loop it through that, pull it tight, and then you loop it underneath the little bit that's sticking up, and then through underneath its body and its wings, which is what my thumb's touching now, and that's it locked in place, dead nice and tight. And we'll follow the line all the way along. It has two plusic knots, which I've just added some um, D shackles on, all right. And then the main part that you connected to at the beginning, it's just got a very, very small hook there. All right, absolutely ideal. Nice lightweight, but the downside is sometimes I think because the cordage is the same on this side, sometimes you've got to get a bit too tight and you've got to prise them open to get them to slide. All right. Now I'm recording in 4K for the first ever time on this channel, so fingers crossed. The, um, the footage comes out a lot clearer and a lot better. All right, so, let, oops, my camera just fell out my hand nearly. Right, let's get the top set up, all right, and uh, stop waffling. So all we've got here is the DD Camo 3B3 top. I never keep me lines connected to it. All right, so I just, I, I use them for everything. All I've got to do is find the center. Connect that onto there. Onto that one. Nice and tight. And then we just fold this over the ridge line. 
So then it, what happens is it gives me ridge line underneath me top so then I can hang things off. Okay, so that's that set up there. Then inside my bag, all right, I have a bag with some pegs in, which I'd automatically put straight in my pocket. Magic carpet, DD Magic carpet. Let's put that on the floor. And then I've got me cordage in here as well, all right? Already fixed with some little D shackles on, all right? So that's, that's me cordage there. It's enough for what you need. A little D shackle connected onto a loop. It's a double, double whammy one, all right? And then I just connect them to the corners and then peg it out, all right? Right, my apologies everybody. I thought I'd press record. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a fault of mine or the fault of the camera again, but um, I didn't record us doing the rest of the guide ropes and everything. But as you can see, I've got the, the top up there now, but because this corner goes right in between two trees, all I've done is, I've got me cordage started from here and I've brought it around to this tree, okay? And then I've brought it straight across and then around this tree and then back on itself, okay? Back to the main corner, through the loop and then I've brought it round the back of this one, pulled it tight, looped it back through there again and done two half hitches with a bit of stick in the middle there just as a, a, a a slip knot, all right, and that makes it nice and level, okay. So as you can see there, I don't know if you can pick the cordage up on the on the screen itself, like, but there it is. And anyway, and that saves me having a big massive cord coming all the way from that corner, all the way down to a big massive tree down there. All right, so that's the that's the top set up. All right, and now all we need to do is. This place is down there. Now we just need to get this out, okay? Now this is a new, a new purchase I went and uh, got. Oops, excuse me, bit of windage. I'm gonna put the bag in my pocket. All right. And all this is is a ground sheet inside of there, some pegs, and then it's a big, big netting, so I can sit underneath my top tonight in my, in my sleeping bag and on my roll mat and not worry about getting bitten in bits. All right, so what I'll do is I'll get you set up, we'll clear the floor and we'll get this set up. All right. All right, so first of all, all we need to do first is just clear the ground, make sure we get rid of all the bits and pieces that could possibly make me, me sleep uncomfortable or puncture me net, eh, me, me, what do you call it, me pad. It's not the, the flattest of ground, there's a couple of roots in there that needs to come out as well. All right, but I've got my ridge line here, so basically me net thing's gonna come straight down into the center I'm going to put that there and then I'm going to see, make sure you're in shot. Oh yeah, plenty, plenty shot there. Right, so and anyway, we've got this new bit of kit here. So I'm just going to unroll it. That's the bag there with the pegs. They're just bog standard uh, pegs. And there's a couple of little guide ropes in here as well. All right, bag inside my pocket. So we've got six little metal fin pegs and I think there's a couple of bits of uh, cordage on here as well so I'm just going to untangle that now well I think I should have done that first like anyway let's get it untangled see how many bits we've got I think there should be two bits yeah two bits of red cordage there now this is the first time I've had it out the bag so I just need to see where the main door is. And there it is there. And I've put the pegs and everything in the way. Because I'm silly.
Right, that's what we've got there. That's a little door. And there's a door on that side. Right, happy days. So we just need to make sure this is centralised underneath. And then obviously you've got the, the pyramid shape there, all right. What I'm going to do is, that's about equal there, I think. Get some pegs. Obviously, like I said, this is the first time I've set this up. All right. So we're obviously having two doors on either either side. That's ideal because if I've got my bag behind us, I can just reach out and get my bag into my bag and that. So I've already got loads of crap all over the top of it. <laughs> but never mind. Let's keep it nice and straight. No way I'm talking silly like. Keep it taut. Right, last peg. And then we've got them over there. Bit of cordage. Put that on there. And that should hopefully stick to there. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to look and see if I've got a little clip and I'll just clip that onto there. So I think that'll be the easier option. All right, so we'll just put you on pause and I'll find a clip rather than tying one of these on. Okay then, so that's, that's it set up there now. All right, so what I've done is, I've got a, a small little clip. It was just slightly too long putting it on your bill of elastic, which might be a bad idea, not for using that like. But in any way, future reference, put me ridge line a little bit higher. But it's nice and taut there now on the main loop itself. And as you can see, all right, you've got a nice little shelter there. It still feels like it's a little bit hemmed in, but I'll see what it's like. All right, as you can see at the back here, all right, it's it's nice and straight, yeah, and it's got a, a big massive door all along the side here so, to get in. All right, so that's a nice nice big opening door there, as you can see. All right, we'll get that shut so we don't get hit with any muzzies. All right, it's not the biggest of um, compartments to to sleep in. I think I've went and ordered the wrong one to be quite honest, because this isn't the the one I was looking at. I think I've either ordered it wrong or they have sent the wrong one because the one I wanted was a bit more square. But actually this one will probably fit in one of my TP tents. So that's happy days like. And then obviously you've got the dome one. So I think basically what I might have done is I might have put this, sorry about the action on the camera here. As you can see, there's a nice big space there to crawl in at the front end. All right. I might have put it in the wrong way. I might need the big one at the forward and this one at the back, but it doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, so, and anyway, what I'm going to do is, I'll get my sleeping system set up. Spin yous around. All right, oops, sorry about that. Okay, what I'll do is, I'll get my sleeping system out, get that set up, and then I'll bring you back and talk you through some of my kit that I've brought. All right, because time's a ticket now, it's uh, 20 to seven, and I need to get some firewood prepped. See you in a bit. Right, okay everybody, uh, welcome back. Um, as you can see, it's sun setting now. It's quarter to eight at night. I've had to revert back to my GoPro Hero 7 because the Hero 9 keeps on um, stop working all the time. Keeps on going into a format, which is cutting out as I'm doing recordings. I might be able to salvage a few little clips of it. I'm not really 100% sure, all right? I'm not sure if it's because I've switched up to 4K to do this video in 4K, but I can't see that being the problem, to be quite honest. And anyway, I'll start again from where I set off on my last bit. So, and anyway, it's quarter eight at night. As you can see, looking down here, I've got the bits of wood that were left over from the last camp, and then I've just been going around picking stuff up off the floor. It's all nice and dry, everything. 
that's probably going to be enough wood for us, I think, for tonight. But this is my main setup, okay? Um, I've brought a Trekology chair with us because my other one's broke. All right. And this is the um, the actual net itself. All right. Now, I'm just going to put you down a second. And hopefully it's light enough on here. I think the camera picks up some good light in any rate. But anyway, that's that's the um, the setup. Okay. It's... It's it's enough room, but I think it's a little bit narrower compared to another uh, net I've seen. I think I have actually bought the wrong one, but it'll be ideal for when I put it into my TPs and everything. So inside of there, I'm just going to move this bit out of the way. So in, inside of here, okay, let's just spin yours around a little bit better. All right, let's try and make sure that nothing flies in because I've already had some flies in. So inside there, I've got me me other Trekology mat, all right, and then I've just got me normal lightweight sleeping bag that I've been using off for the last couple of camps. On top of there, I've just got me snug pack Special Forces bivy bag, just in case there's any damp issues during the night, and then me Trekology pillar, and that's it. Bit of clothing like me uh, me softy jacket for later on tonight, and me pee bottle in there. That's it. Okay. Now let's just zip that up. So as you can see, on the top what I've done is, I've just went and got a D shackle and I've connected that to my ridge line through the loop that's on there. I've never used the actual corded, um, elastic cordage because it was just like hanging down too low. All right. Now it does seem to sag a little bit at the bottom, so I'll just plot you down a second. Sorry about this. It does seem to sag down a little bit at the bottom, so I think it, it, it probably needs pulled up a little bit more. Um, but it'll just, it'll do for tonight, I think. And anyway. So, drink for tonight. I've got two cans of Stella, which one's sitting there right to open up now. Actually, I'm gonna sit and open it because I'm getting a bit, my head's done in off these bloody cameras. Let's just tip yours up a bit. Right, fingers crossed this camera works, okay. GoPro Hero 9 is doing my head in. It keeps cutting out all the time, and then when I've come out tonight, all that's done is, all my footage that I've been doing, I, it's, I think it's all corrupt, all the way from the setup of my camp, from walking into the woods and everything, and I'm absolutely devastated because there's no way I'm packing everything up and restarting the whole video. So if the if there's bits of clips where it goes missing, then I apologise. It's not my problem. Well, it's not my problem. It's not my fault. Sorry, it's the bloody cameras. So the camera GoPro Hero 9 will be getting sent back. I've heard a lot of people having issues with it. But anyway, nothing of me whinging. Can of Stella, getting a little bit warm. It's actually really warm tonight. I think it's about... 20 degrees or something it's absolutely unbelievable i think we'll do some rain tomorrow like so but i'm not really bothered ah cheers everybody as you can see i've got a nice little log there to put my beer on i brought the um the stove now this stove i got i've when the company said would you like to have a, like a windshield or a, a stove or something i thought it was one of these Little wood burners that you just, little round ones that you pull the bit out, turn upside down, put it on. It has two compartments and it'll go in your bag. Nice little stove. No, no, no. The postman turns up with this bloody thing. It's like a bloody drum. So anyway, what I've done is I've neutralised the, the weight, the space inside of it. And I've got bits and pieces packed in there and anyway. So what we'll do is I'll get the camera set up properly so you can see. And then I'll open it up and you can have a look. Right then, let's have a look at the wood burn stove that I've been sent by a company. I sorry, I apologise, I can't remember the name. I'll ping it up on the screen for you here now. All right, now they've sent us this here. Yeah, it's absolutely humongous. I was expecting something about that big, to be honest. Um, and then when I've re-looked at the email um, the other day, I've realised that for eighty-six dollars or whatever it was, it's not going to be. A tiny little one but anyway let's have a look and see what I've got it's that big there's a lot of room inside of it so I've actually stored a lot of stuff 
this actually fitted into me inside of me Bergen um, I, had to, I had to put it through the front compartment part like to get it in but it fitted okay it's, it's quite heavy I'll put a link in the description it'll have all the stats about it and everything okay it's a stainless steel one but we'll have a look as we we'll open it up so obviously the bag itself is like a drum bag it's got a nice lid on the top that opens up the materials a little bit flimsy to be quite honest I thought it would have been a bit more sturdier um, I see how long it lasts over a period of time but obviously I've been able to fit my plate in it we've got the main ring off the top I'll just put that on one side and then in one of the compartments all right as we can see I'll just fold the bag down so you can see it I'll tell you what let's let's take the whole thing out the bag As you can see, that's that's one of the compartments there and another compartment on the inside of it, all right? Now, I'm just hoping that the camera's picking this up because rather really you see the product and me. So inside of there, I've got my titanium pot, my gas, my gas stand, my personal hygiene kit, and a spatula. So it, it's a big, it's a big bloody stove, all right? And then that's that's the base compartment all right and as you can see it's got loads of air holes all the way around the bottom okay and then on the top itself it's got loads of holes again it's got two two holes that stand up over which obviously for to help you interlock the both segments together so that's the base pot that goes on the floor inside of there you've then got the pot holder now obviously yeah I've I've got a small pot, it's not going to sit on there, but I've got a, I've got a grill with this that will go on the top of there in any rate. There is other parts on the website where it says it sends hot plates, grills, things like that, but they haven't, they haven't sent them out with this product and I don't understand why because it's part of the product. Then in the bottom of there I've got my wash kit, some cooking oil, my brew kit and I've actually fitted in a frying pan as well. All right, so obviously for storing stuff inside of it when you're going to go somewhere and cook with it, you can get a load of gear inside of it. So anyway, this is the main part, okay. Now all you do is, you've got the bottom section here, as I said before, it's got two rivets on there, okay. And then it's got grooves on the, on the top. So you just put that down there like so. And on the bottom, it marries up again the same way, yeah. So then all you do is just marry them up so they fit together all right i like to put them that way and then you've got the big hole at the bottom and the big hole at the top there married up together so that's it it fits nice and snug all right it's not going to slide off okay because as you can see these two here go through the holes on the bottom yeah and that's what keeps it from moving and then you've got the plate that goes on the top, it's a bit like a frisbee, or if you want to be an angel, if you can see my head, there is. That goes on. Now, if you put it on flat ways, it's just going to slide off. So tip it upside down and put it in. And then you've got the pan stand itself. And that just sits in the groove on the top there. And that's it, happy days. And then, obviously, frying pan fits on there. And you've got a nice bit of air flow a gap there to allow the flames and that to get through as well okay so that's basically the setup it's easy an easy setup now all we've got to do is we've just got to cut the wood all right get some bits and pieces in there make it the right size and then we'll get a get a get a fire cracked on because it's now five past eight all right i want to get a nice bit of embers in there and then i've got some chicken i want to cook and some uh, Mexican rice as well okay so I'll get this all set up get me wood cut and then I'll bring you back all right happy days right well as you can see it's starting to get dark now it's 25 to 9 all right so I've got my light off me GoPro Hero 9 giving us a bit of light here so all I've got is I've got a pile of wood here that I've snapped up and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some bits Line the the bottom of the um, the stove with, 
All right. And then all I'm going to do is, just for quickness, I've got a couple of these little lighter things. I probably only need the one, to be honest. All right, I'm not doing any bushcrafty things. So it's quick. Let's get it started. I've got a few, a few little twigs. Tell you what, let's give it a fighting chance. Put the two of them in. And it's going to build the fire up without smothering it, that is. Now we'll see how this how this goes there. Eh? Ah, it's getting late. But this is what happens when you get out of the house late at night. Uh, it was nice, nice six o'clock-ish by the time I got here. As you can hear in the background, uh, it's not not that mega far from houses to be quite honest. And it's a school, not the school holidays, so loads of people are out and about playing that in the fields and that the kids do all the time. So let's just hope they stay away from here. So as you can see, that's starting to catch light there nicely. I'm just going to keep building it up and building it up. Like a couple of little fat bits on. Most of this is a dead wood, like punky wooden anyway, some of this. But I've got some chunky bits there to put on. Um, and I've got more wood to one side to cut up as well. So as you can see, that's going nicely. Let's put me lighter away. It's a quite a big pit, so it's going to give off enough for what I need for tonight. I don't need a big raging fire, it's quite warm in any way. So, happy days, like. Okay, so what I've got in there now is some Mexican style um, rice that you know we do in the microwave, like, but I've just hiding a little bit of water in my little Pathfinder pot, and I'm just going to let that come to a, a boil on there. All right, the stove's giving off absolutely tons of heat. It's quite actually really good for burning, actually. Um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of impressed with it, like. So it's doing quite well. But yeah, just got to keep feeding it. Obviously, because we don't want it to die out too much. And obviously, as you can see, it's it's a nice big opening at the bottom there, so it allows you to get plenty. Plenty of bits of wood in, all right. And once it's once it's gone, as you can see there, it's it's going up no bother whatsoever now. All right, just the odd couple of bits in now to keep it going, and that's it. But like I said earlier on, when I looked at the website, it said that it come with a grill that went on the top and everything, and I'm quite disappointed that the company's never sent them out with it, because it would have been ideal instead of me instead of me having to bring this grill out myself um, to put over the top I would have had the proper one that fitted properly and then the hot plate and everything would have been nicer being given as well but like I say all I'm going to do is I'm going to get the rice get that get that boiling and take it off and then I'll start prepping me me chicken to go on this has been marinating uh, and that's it there all right, it's got like herbs and spices and bits of some sort of curry, I think. Not really, I can't really remember. It's, it's from the fat butchers up in Blythe, so hopefully that'll be really nice. But yeah, back down to the Hero 7. Disappointed with the Hero 9, to be quite honest. Um, definitely be getting in contact with them and taking it back, like just no good is it but in any way cheers everybody it's just good to be out in the woods isn't it there's too much doom and gloom in the world without me going on about it, things like that as well but yeah nice little stove that i'm actually 
considering I was a bit felt a bit negative about it earlier on now it's got a fire in it and it's burning I'm just going to turn that off and hopefully you can see us um, I can't remember where my other torch is so obviously yeah GoPro 9 don't buy one my advice I'll just put that light there and then that'll be it so instead of having a head torch on but yeah um i'm sitting right next to this next to the fire and it's feeding well it's burning really well as well so obviously the airflow getting into it and everything's working trip sweet as a nut yeah i'm just gonna chill out get some food obviously once me rice is done i'll take that off the heat remove the the grill that I've put on and then my frying pan will just sit on the proper burner properly and then when I'm finished cooking I can take the ring off the top and then just keep putting wood on through the top end instead of feeding it through the bottom but I've got enough wood there to keep us going and I can always source some more because there's plenty of it lying around okay then right it's time for the frying pan to go on I'm just gonna get rid of me gloves a little bit of oil and hopefully the camera's hitting the spot Okay, and as you can see, I've got the frying pan on the go there now. All right, it's gonna it's not as flat as what I wanted it to be. And anyway, I've got some chicken here, and uh, we're just gonna chunk that into there. Hopefully that'll start keeping there nicely in there. Now I've went and bought this knife that I got off Al, Al Robinson, Robinson, sorry, um, a Robert. I'll apologise, I can't remember if what he's said the name is properly. But uh, yeah, I've bought this up to use for my kitchen knife so this is absolutely cracking it's a field master and it's nice and sharp as well so but anyway i'm going to put that to one side for now because i don't want to do what i've done last time and that's um burn me burn me food So as you can see that that's gonna be cooking away nicely my legs are absolutely red as now off this little stove unbelievable but anyway what i'm going to do is i'm not going to bore you with cooking this the whole process of cooking that big lump of chicken all right i'll bring you back as and when it's ready to plate it up okay then so i think that's me chicken just about done as you can see i've moved the tripod over as well to hang the pot on all right yeah so that's that's working a treat and my pan my pan's been there uh, boiling over nicely as well so that's everything nice and prepped so all i've got to do now is just plate it up so let's get this turned round and uh we'll see what we can do okay and so here we are time to plate it up now all right so the the rice has, has gone quite nice now inside the tin might be a, a little bit no no it's actually perfect so i'm going to do is i'm just going to spread that on there probably still a bit too much fluid in it so 
Oh, never mind. Let's get that spread out a little bit. Smells nice, the rice like. And then we've got the chicken. I've actually ended up cutting it up into little bits just to make sure it was cooked properly fully through. Uh, not like me chicken on me not like me chicken on me last bit. There's a few little char bits on the outer side, as you can see here with the um the what do you call it? Where the sauces have been. But I, I need to make sure my chicken's done properly like. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to hire a couple of bits of wood in the fire. Get rid of that ring off the top. Oh, you forgot that it was hot. And then just hire some wood in. Get me fire going. Right then, let's have a, um, a taste of this then. So... Hello peeps, I'll tell you what, turn my torch off, so I think it'll be bright enough with that. Yeah, that's better. Right, I feel like I'm all cock-handed here because I'm sitting at a side angle. There you go, the chicken's nicely cooked there. Oh yeah, oh it's perfect. All the bloody mozzies turned up because I've turned the lights up. Anyway, yeah, that chicken is really nice, like, it's got a nice texture to it. And the rice is perfect as well. Well, it's not perfect, but it's, it's the way I like it. It's nice, soft. It's got a nice taste to it, nice Mexican taste. And I think that marries up nicely, so, well, anyway... He has me, he has me, he has me tea stroke supper. So I'm going to sit back, relax and enjoy that. I'm going to get my radio on, listen to some tunes, build the fire up again because it's dying right down. And uh, I'll catch you later on. All right. Right, well, time's a ticking now, like. It's now quarter to 11 at night I've just been sitting proper chilling out in front of this little fire pit and uh, yeah I'm impressed it's it's a good little bit of kit it's a bit bulky it's a bit heavy for what I use would use it for um, but it's it's a good one for burning burning wood in it's it's not eaten through the wood dead quick it's Giving off absolutely tons of heat. Mind you, I am practically sat on top of it, like, but my legs are red as. And uh, yeah, it's just nice to sit and chill in front of a stove. I wouldn't like to carry it too far, like, um, plus it takes up a quarter of my bergen. But other than that, yeah, it's doing what it's meant to do. It's a fire, it's off the ground, so if you need, a, need to have a, 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 an open fire but off the ground to protect the area, then yeah, I, I think this would work. Preferably for car camping and things like that, like, to be quite honest, or a very, very short walk like what I've done the day. But yeah, so now anyway, wait, I've still got me, me Jack Daniels and me Baileys to drink. And uh, I'm not really sure if I'm going to drink them, to be honest. But this is definitely going to be the last clip for tonight. And I'm going to sit and chill. I've got about a quarter of a can of beer left. It took us all night to drink two cans. And, um, yeah. I'm going to listen to some tunes and think about getting into my pit. So, on any rate, thanks for watching so far. I hope it's been of interest to you. Uh, obviously, I've got a few problems with me 
bits of footage so I'll try and put some things together off it off me GoPro Hero 9 highly disappointed to be quite honest but it is what it is and just as well I've brought me GoPro Hero 7 as a backup and uh, yeah I'll catch you in the morning all right oh a bit of wood just fell off the side of the stove there see you later right hi everybody and uh, I'm all organized now all up washed dressed and all my food prep and all that's being sorted over here I've got a little gas stove to make a brew on when I've got the fire uh, getting the fire going properly to cook some eggs and bacon on all right so the the stove itself last night worked worked a treat like it's burnt everything apart from one log so everything's just gone into little little bits of ash all right there's a couple of little embers left in there all right but we're not going to muck around i'm just going to hire a couple of bits of wood in that fits actually there's some good glows down on the right on the bottom on the bottom plate so i'm just going to put some of them on i'm just going to use one of these again there's no no like bush crafty type making fires this week as you can see the the wood's already starting to smoke off the embers all right so i should have just probably just blew it back up but never mind let's try that big fat one there and then that'll rest all the other bits on it and then we'll just get these bits on all the small bits first get the fire going just build it up as easy as that isn't it no mucking around nice and easy way to start a fire first thing in the morning all right we've done all the bush crafty type fires in the past sometimes it's nice just to do an easy way of doing it isn't it I right, so I've got um, two eggs, two sausages, two bits of brown bread with us because that's the type of bread I like eating and uh, we're just going to make sausage and egg sandwich for this morning and then obviously if that doesn't fill us up then I've got some normal porridges that I bring I'm going to get a cup of tea on the go now and uh, get the, like I say get the breakfast done and then once that's done I'll get packed up and then uh, let's see where we'll go from there. Okay, so now me, me, um, me fire's at the right, right stage for cooking on now. So I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna move a couple of bits out of the way. Get all the bits of crap off the top of me frying pan get that put on top of there get a bit of heat on it nice bit of oil doesn't seem very level That's it a little bit better. So inside, inside me egg container, I think you can see me on camera, can you? Just, anyway, inside the egg, egg container, I have, have you guessed yet? Two eggs, sorry, two eggs, two sausages, and some ketchup, okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the sausages out just let them go into the frying pan I'll keep that as a rubbish bag and as you can hear it's a nice little sizzle starting to brown already happy tears yeah it's um not the not the flattest of surfaces. Maybe it's next time. Bring a spirit level with you, Jimmy. <laughs> we 
But yeah, we'll get these sausages cooked off and then we'll do the eggs separate. I'm gonna see if I can put a little bit of twig or something underneath the base of the, that's that done. I don't think, the camera doesn't look like it's in shot. But anyway, you don't need to see me. You can see the camp, see the food cooking. Right there, cooking really nicely. I think it's gone from one side to the other side, hasn't it? Anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll get these sausages um, cooked off a bit more, and then we'll look at putting the eggs in. I'll just put the eggs up there. And while we've got them cooking, I'm just going to use the wood as a bit of a base. Now I've just brought, sorry I know my camera angle's a bit crap. Uh, I've just brought two bits of brown bread. So all I'm going to do is get them out of this packet. It's a bit tight that. That's better. Right. <laughs> Let's get me eggs flipped. Before I burn them. Because I'll only have Mr. Rooney complaining. Oh, look at them. Perfect eggs, them. Perfect Rooney. Perfect mate. Eh? Now I've just got some ketchups. And all I'm going to do. I'm just going to squirt that on the bread. It makes it easier. Oh. Proper nectar. And then all we're going to do is sausages I'm just gonna cut them in half now and flip them over beautiful absolutely beautiful Eggs are perfect. And they'll even have a bit of yak in the middle. Look at them eggs. Brilliant. Let's bring you up for a close art look. There we go, look at that. Lovely. Eh? I had a few people complain about me cooking. I've been complaining myself like. But anyway, eggs are done. Oh, look at that. Let's have a look at the sausages. Lovely. Tell you what, spin that off. Let's go safe with it with a fork.
I'm gonna get my last ketchup. Oh, oh, just gonna get me frying pan, take that off the fire. There we go, look. Let's angle this down a bit. One egg and sausage, nope, one egg and sausage sandwich. Look. Right, well, I've got me big um, sausage and egg sandwich cooked there. Nice cup of tea to wash it down with. GoPro Hero 9, done what I done yesterday. It's just switched off, so I'm not very happy with it. As you can see on the screen. All right, it's come up, seeing that, I don't know if you can see with the glare, seeing that there's no SIM card in it when there is. And it's a brand new SIM card, nice and full, uh, nice and empty. So at any rate, back to, this, back to the 7 again. Oh my God. Anyway, I'm going to sit and chillax with me cup of tea, me sandwich, and I'll bring this back when I'm finished. All right, see you in a bit. Okay then, sorry I've not brought this back for a long time. I've just been sitting chilling and I've just started um, decamping. Uh, not not because it's starting to rain, it's just I want to decamp because I need to do a couple of other, uh, little tasks before I go home. But anyway, as you can see, the stove was down there. I've just put all the ashes into my fire pit just let them burn off because I wanted to pack the stove first and as you can see there it is in the bottom of the bag so it fits in there perfect but it's got to go through the front entrance like where the zips are okay and as you can see it's just a complete mess it's an organized mess but it's a mess in any rate so I'm just going to start de -kitting. I'm not going to bring you along for it because it's a long boring bit of footage for you all right um i'll just bring this back when i've got the majority of my stuff packed and basically i've got my top left okay right see you in a while because it will be for me but it won't be for you right that's it then all packed away only thing i've got left to do is my top and then put out the fire but that's going to be smouldering for the next couple of hours while I'm here doing something else so yeah it's been a fantastic camp uh, I enjoyed sleeping in that bug net because you still had the flow of air coming through and you had visibility all the way around your um your shelter area which is what I like to see I like to be able to see out I love going tent camping at the minute as well but being hemmed in a tent You've got no no views or anything when you wake up through the night and things. In a woodland, it's a bit different because you can sleep underneath a tarp. Okay, so anyway, before I go into waffle mode, I've got all my stuff packed away in the Bergen. Sorry about the camera action there. And then I've got a small little plastic bag there with my empty cans crushed and a couple of little bits of uh, stuff that I couldn't burn. All the rest of my rubbish that I could be burned has been. Okay. And, uh, yeah. That's it, as you can see. Just got a few bits of wood to stand up against the trees, which I'm gonna be using some of them bits in any way in a minute or something else. But anyway, I'm starting to go into waffle mode. So before I do, I'd just like to say, thank you very much everybody for watching. I really appreciate all the support and all the comments and everything that I'm getting at the minute. All right, um, check, check the links below for all like groups and buy me a coffee and Instagram accounts me email account things like that okay and i'll catch you on the next one all right see you later oh before i say see you later don't forget go and check the link below as well that's going to be in here for ant from survive the night him and all the lads are up in scotland now as i record this video this video will be out a couple of weeks afterwards but anyway check the link below for the just given page it's for alzheimer's uh, charity they've raised a lot of money they're all out there um a big group of them go and check go and check the link out please and please donate even if it's only 10 pence all right if everybody that is subscribed to my channel donates 10 pence to that charity it's going to be a canny few quid isn't it all right cheers everybody catch us on the next one